Oh, you can also. There we go. And there we go. And I've got a little new, new mic here, so we're working on it from the key. But the glad that you're here, and we're in a season of prayer, as you know. Pastor Russ, you're taking us through a, a, a series on prayer, so I just want to continue to encourage you to please be spending time purposely, trying to increase your time before the Lord, spending time in His presence. The goal being, you know, give, giving the Lord an hour a day is one of the questions He asks His disciples: Could you not, could you not tarry with me for one hour? So, uh, please uh, be seeking the Lord. We need, we need direction for our church. We need. Obviously, we're in a very tenuous time in our nation, so we need to be a people of prayer. Speaking of that, uh, I'm going to open up with prayer, and I'm going to invite Emily to come up and give us a missions update. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today and to be a people of faith. Thank you for the opportunity to call on your name. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to respond to your prompting. And Lord, may we catch your heart. May we people that hear, God, what you're saying, and able to, Lord, pray your prayers and pray your word. And thank you as we gather today. We want to honor you. Uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, we know that you're working around the world and that we get to be a part of that through missions. So, Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what did you come? What can you talk about? You're good, but you're not that good. Here's one. <laughs> oh, gracious sakes. Hey, it's been a long time since we met, but let me tell you something. Are you excited? I want you to know that being a part of missions, are you a part of it? Is the greatest part of your life. You think about that. Every time I go to spend money, I have to think, do I need it or do I want it? Mm -hmm. And if I just want it, just give a little more to missions. Okay, budget for 2021. Well, it looks to me like it's a little over $16,000. Now that's a lot for this little church. But the January offering got us really going. $3,373.60. So we are on our way. If, if you're not a part of Missions Giving, it's not too late. You are absolutely welcome. We'll just plug you right in. I would like, I'm going to ask some little boys to come and pass these out. One per family. If you would like more, then you just let us know. But I'm going to ask pastor and pastor to pass them out. Come on, boys. One per family. Thank you very much. Don't they do good work? Aren't you proud of them? Okay. Well, they're doing that. Here comes Barb, and she's a definite mission skipper. Welcome, Barb. I would like to introduce to you, because of your giving, now remember, you promised to pledge so we could read the, get the money. We have added these two missionaries to our roster. Number one, you ready? Set, go. There they are. That's the high alpha director for Dayton, and they're doing one fabulous job. So when you get your new missions folder, you look to their name, and you'll see Adam. Now, number two, let's see that. That's brother and sister offered. They're going to Sri Lanka. Not able to go yet. You know why? The borders are closed because of COVID. 
but just pray. And I want you to know they were excited that this church took them on and gave them a pledge. Hey, do you ever wonder last year, up until COVID, Irene, hi, honey, that we sent cards to missionaries? Did you ever sign a card to a missionary? Some of you did. Well, you know what I got to wondering? Do they really care? Do they really read what we write? Or do they just throw it out? I would like Tish to come and tell you the reaction of just one birthday card. Good morning. Well, I am in a Bible study with several of the pastor's wives around the state of Ohio. And Brittany McAllister is one of those pastor's wives. And she and her husband, um, Kyle, are Chi Alpha missionaries to Ohio University down in Athens. And she said, who is the person at your church who sent these birthday cards? And, and I was telling her about Emily, and she said, well, let me tell you. One time we were coming home from a conference, and her little boy, his name is Asher, and they've got just three littles, probably I think they're probably all preschool, if early, maybe in early elementary. But she said their little, her little boy was just really discouraged. And, you know, with school so different, he was sad. He was very sad. But they got home and found a birthday card in the mail to him from our church that had stickers in it. And she said his face just lit up and it made his day that somebody remembered him and send him stickers for his birthday. And so thank you for um, thinking of Asher for his birthday this year. Does it matter? Kim? them a Valentine's package. And she sent me pictures with the kids holding the stuff that we sent. The kids signed um, Valentine cards and she sent some free gifts and stuff. Um, from Kyle Alford. Thank you for the wonderful card in the mail. We are tremendously grateful for the vital role you serve so faithfully in the church. We are honored to be your missionaries and represent you in Sri Lanka. Know that you are greatly appreciated. It pays. And I Oh, well, I got one. Now, this is, do you remember the word veteran missionary? Well, this is from a veteran missionary that has been serving for years. And they're now an intercultural ministry in Arizona. But this is what Peggy said. Peggy and Glenn Gray, thank you for your contact with us. You are one of the few that writes personally to us. It does matter. But let me tell you a little sad story. How many have appreciated the United States Post Office? Well, I sent a card bar all the way to Columbus. To Kenzie from OSU for their anniversary. And I got it back. So I called Kenzie and I said, Hey, is this your address? And he goes, Yep. So if you send a card, always put your return address because sometimes the UO's post office doesn't always do its best. But please, if you want a thrill, love your missionary. Love them, love them, love them. Thank you. Um, let's see what they're putting in. Thank you, Emily. Oh, come on, there it is. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, it's thinking. And uh, our missionary, we've got a missionary family here we're going to be introducing in just a little bit. But don't take off. Hold on. We've got a brand new baby. Oh, where, who's got the baby over here? Oh, Grandpa's got the baby. 
Stand up, hold up the baby. This is Daniel. This isn't a dedication. This is a welcome to the first service that Daniel gets to come to. Daniel weighed in at six pound, nine ounces. I was going to say seven, six pound, nine ounces. Little peanut, but he's in the world. We were praying for him. They had a little bit of difficulty at delivery, but they were only in the hospital two days, and they got to come home. God blessed them. So let's welcome Daniel to the service this morning. Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. And at this time, if the worship team will come, we're going to worship the Lord together. And I just believe God wants to do something different this morning. How many of you would, how, how many of you like different? Yeah. How many of you don't like different? Let's be honest, come on. Well, he's new every morning. Yes. Amen. He's going to do something new this morning. Are you ready to receive new? Are you ready to receive different? This morning, I believe that as we worship God, we're going to experience his presence like never before. He inhabits the praises of his people. So I want you to make sure that he has something to inhabit. Amen? Amen. So stand with me this morning. Father, uh, we've already prayed today, but I just feel a sense of, of going the extra mile and making sure that, that we invite you into this place. Inhabit our praises. May our worship and our praises be a sweet savor to you. Lord, if, if we've had a bad week, then let it be a sacrifice. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will do all that you desire to do. Lord, now this morning, we thank you. We give you glory and pray that, that we will be in the center of your will today, knowing that you are our King, our Savior. You're our God. We love you this morning. You give life. You are love. You bring life to my door. Your breath in our lungs, so we 
the enemy is all around. Look at the enemy. We can, we're in trouble. And the prophet of God prayed that God would open his eyes so that he would see the heavenly realms. And when his eyes were open, he saw everything just covered in the, the angels of God ready for warfare. And this morning, I want you to know that the heavenlies are with you today. They're in this place. If you can't see them, I'm your pastor. Trust me on this one. The angels of God are in this place today. The Spirit of God is moving around this place today to touch you, to breathe upon you, and listen to this, to breathe into you. Holy Spirit, CPR, he wants to breathe life in you like you've never known before. Let's welcome him here today. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. No
Wednesday is uh, Ash Wednesday, and there'll be actually millions of Christians around the world that will just begin to become more focused on Easter, and uh, it'll begin to happen a period of 40 days of what's called Lent, and this is a time for um, us as believers to really introspect, look, look at our lives, and, and uh, as we to celebrate the greatest gift, the greatest sacrifice that was ever made for, for humanity. And when Jesus died on the cross, uh, we realize how much he gave up to come down to be one of us. And uh, the question is, Lord, what, what can I give up for you over this period of time? And I just encourage you to pray. Just ask the Lord. Now, it's obviously something, something that's not sinful. Obviously, obviously sinful things, we're, we're always supposed to give those things up. But what's there, what is there something that we could sacrifice in our in our lives over that period of time? So this is how the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. And what maybe God ask you to give up for him just to become more focused. Not that we're, we're earned, not trying to earn his favor or to, to make ourselves better, but just to acknowledge how good he is and how much he gave to us and for us. And uh, what, what can we give back to him? So. Lord God, thank you today as we celebrate you and your presence. Holy Spirit, we do. We welcome you. We honor you. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for guiding us into all truth. And Lord, open up our hearts to be able to really uh, just have that sense of what you're speaking to us personally and individually, Lord. What, what can we do that would just greater demonstrate our incredible love to you? our thankfulness for God, how good you are to us. And Lord, even the ashes remind us that from dust to dust, that we're, all, we're just but dust, Lord, that you have shined your love upon us and granted us a great favor, a great purpose in life. And we just want to we just want to honor you more, Lord. We just want to live for you in a, in a really a higher realm, just demonstrating the lordship of Jesus in every area of our lives. So thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for that great promise, Jesus, that you gave that your sheep hear your voice, that we can hear the voice of God, that you are very personal, that you're very close to us. Thank you, Lord, for being such a good, good father. Thank you for being such a loving God, making provision for us in every area of our lives. And to you, Lord, be the honor and the glory and the praise. Be seated. I want to remind you, it's nine to five o'clock. Uh, the youth, the current youth, be meeting right here at five o'clock, and also uh, Jan and I will have our small group tonight at five o'clock here. We'd love to have you join us for just an hour of sharing with one another, praying for one another. Uh, two weeks from today, we'll be having a, uh, a ceremonial seder with guest missionary Robert Spector, Rock of Israel Ministries. So please sign up in the foyer to let us know that you're coming, so we can plan for you, have materials for you. And then immediately today, after the service, there'll be a short meeting in the discipleship kids room for any workers who minister to children ages 0 to 18, Sunday school, nursery, kids, church, etc. So there'll be a short meeting for all of you. And I think right now Debbie has... Uh, 
Thirsty. Oh, 
Debbie, it is well with my soul. What more could you ask for? Well, this morning, we have the privilege of having some missionaries with us, but before we do that, we need to release our kids to Children's Church and the adults that are working with them. Please go. Tim and Nicole Strange are missionaries to and they. Costa Rica. I knew it wasn't Guatemala. That's what clicked in my brain. Costa Rica. There are missionaries. They're going to be coming and sharing with us. Oh, I need to get that microphone. Up. They're going to be sharing with us this morning and about what God has been doing. If you were in the Sunday school class, you got a sneak peek at who they are and what they're about. If you weren't in Sunday school class, shame on you. Should have been there. But uh, we want to welcome them this morning. So I don't know if you folks want to be down here or up here. Down or up, whatever makes you, whatever works for you. Let me turn this on for you. Let's let's welcome them this morning. Good morning, thank you, Pastor Rusty. Thank you, everyone, for having us today. Yes, we are Tim and Nicole Strange. We are the strangest missionaries you're ever going to meet. It's our name, so we own it, and um, it's a pleasure to be with you. I just wanted to um, tag a little bit onto what Miss Emily was sharing and Kim. Um, thank you. Ms. Emily, your enthusiasm, your passion for missions and for the law. Thank you. Thank you for loving missionaries. Thank you for stirring and encouraging and rallying the people. Um, you reminded me of, um, we, just real quick, we got married in 2012, and four months later we went to the field in 2013. And um, I had gone to the field originally as a single mother, widowed, um, our girls, well, I don't remember how old they were then, but now they're almost 19 and almost 21. And um, that first year on the, uh, on the field, it was our first year and a half of marriage, I think we had like six deaths in our families. Very close, both of our fathers, our sister-in-law suddenly passed away at the age of like 51. Um, so many deaths and a lot of grief. And um, we d missionaries, we can't, we don't, always share the, the really, really rough and tough and painful stuff. Um, but that year, there was a group of ladies in New York. I have no idea who they are, where they're from, just a church in New York. They sent me a card, and it was like not a birthday card, just a thinking of you card. And there were about three or four scriptures in there. And every single scripture spoke to my heart and just ministered to me. And it was the Lord saying, see, I haven't forgotten you. See right where you are in the ministry here in Costa Rica with your family, and I got my eye on you. I'm with you. Don't forget, because the enemy is really quick to say he's not. God's not with you. You know, and that's just him. But um, Kim, 2013, a girls' ministry that she was a part of and running um, adopted our girls and sent us care packages year after year on the field. For the kids, sent cards, sent the most creative cards I have ever seen in my life. Um, just a wealth of creative ideas on how to minister to missionaries' kids. And they still have so many of those things, and they know who you are, and they remember you. I know that we've messaged so many times over the years and got to meet last time we were itinerating. And um, you, you did more for our girls than anyone else. Like, I don't think there was ever a, another church that could send a care package. All right, or we get cards occasionally, and we're thankful for them. Very, very thankful for every card, for every letter, every note. But just um, those special holiday things that are hard to get on the field for Valentine's Day and Easter, and um, sometimes there's a holiday that we celebrate here, but they wouldn't celebrate in another country. And you remember, and you send things. And um, they love it. And they're in college now, and they still are in touch with Kim. And um, it's been a huge blessing. So yes, our girls are both in college. They're at Southwestern Somasakai University. Both are studying um, with the intention and the calling in, to go into missions full time after college. Francesca just got engaged at Christmas, and will be marrying another missionary kid who grew up in South Africa. Um, they're getting married in July. She's a senior, and Gianna is a freshman. And um, just after today's service, if you stop by our table, we have several um, things for you to look
look at and to pick up. We have um, brochures that tell about our ministry. We have um, prayer cards, updated ones from um, what we had left before. We have a picture of our family. We don't have Nathan in it yet because they're not married yet. And then um, also I have jewelry that the ladies on the Re Indigenous Reserve where we were, where they made. And if you would like some jewelry to keep um, for just any donation that's on your heart, you can take some jewelry. I also have the bags that are handmade by the Indigenous ladies. And um, just for any um, donation you feel like to give to our ministry, you can have one of the bags from an Indigenous lady on the Reserve. And then a lot of those funds will go back to the women on the Reserve to help them. Thank you so much for all that you do for missions, for missionaries. Thank you for taking on two more families. Please pray for partners for us because none of us can get to the field and stay on the field without churches like yours. And um, we're all in it together. Maybe I'll preach on both sides today. Buenos días, ¿cómo están todos? Ah, algunos de ustedes pueden hablar al Señor del Cielo. Good morning, how are y'all doing? I said, some of y'all can, can speak this language of heaven. You see, for me, the language of heaven is going to be Spanish. For some of y'all, it might be Italian or German. It might just be good old English. But when we get there, every nation, tribe, and tongue will be represented around that throne. How are we looking forward to that day? How are we looking forward to that day? Like some of y'all are asleep already. <laughs> but you know, we've been in Costa Rica now celebrating 10 years. 10 years. God has taken us in places we never thought we'd go because we said yes. And so I want to share with you a little bit about what we do today. You know, we work with the indigenous. There are eight tribes in Costa Rica. We work with three of the eight. Quebecer, Bribri, and Guaymi. And this last four years, God has really almost exclusively focused us on the Guaymi. We've gone out and worked with the Bribri and Quebecer occasionally with our pastor friends, but God has really focused us on the Guaymi because they're the least reached tribe of all Costa Rica. When I say least reached, a lot of people tell you that an indigenous group or whatever group, people group out there, as long as they're 2% Christian, they're reached. So that would be saying, if there's 10 people in a room, two people would be 20% they are Christians. Or if there's 100 people in a room, as long as two people are Christians, we can say that people group are reached. Do we believe that? The scripture says every nation, tribe, and tongue, everyone will have an opportunity to bow on their knee, this side of heaven or at the judgment seat. One of the opportunities, this side of heaven. And so with the Guaymi, there's approximately 4% out of 300,000 people that know who Jesus really is. Most of them have never ever had a real encounter with the living Christ. And so that's where we're at. We're on the highways and byways of where God has called us to. And so I want to take you there briefly this morning, if we can watch this video clip real quick. <laughs>
a soul in them. It's an amazing place God has taken us to. On that reserve, there are two churches, one in the community of La Casona, the other in Las Vegas. What happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. Because God's word is preached and the light shines in the darkness. When we started working in Las Vegas with a pastor named Juan, and Juan was kind of discouraged with where he was at. His church wasn't growing, it was kind of stagnant, and Juan had lost really his desire to be a pastor. We walked alongside him and established an effective discipleship program for his adults, but also for his kids. You see, Juan didn't think kids were valued at all, and they were on the soccer fields while the parents were in church. And so we worked with Juan and showed him the scripture where Jesus values kids. And we started working with him to the point where by the time we left to go home to itinerary, there were over 60 kids invading the church every Sunday. It's so much so that we had to remodel and actually tear down and rebuild their little fellowship hall building, which is only like about 30 feet by 45 feet. Not very big. And then COVID hit. And we had another team lined up and they canceled because they couldn't come. But they sent the funds anyway, and we built another science school classroom bigger than the fellowship hall to hold the kids. So they have two places to go to be discipled and loved on during church. Because before, if it rained on, they are underneath the trees and got wet all during church. But now they have a place to hear this little song, Jesus loves me, this I know. You guys know that song? Do you remember it? How about this one? Jesus loves the little children. All the red and yellow black and they are precious in his sight. Why? Because Jesus loves the little children of the world. When I was growing up, my dad pastored for 45 years, and there was a children's pastor who taught me a different version of that song. And it went, red and yellow, black and green, they are the meanest things he's seen. But Jesus loves the little children anyway. And I was one of those meanest things he's seen. But God got a hold of my life and changed my heart. He had a purpose and plan, just like he has a purpose and plan for every person we encounter. He loves us who we are. He doesn't want us to stay that way. And so today I want to frame some of my thoughts about our ministry around a passage of Scripture. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along with me in Luke chapter 14. Jesus had been with a bunch of Pharisees, and he had been talking with them about where you place a visitor, where you honor a visitor, what you do with a visitor, where they should sit at the table. And like normal Pharisees, they questioned everything Jesus said. And in verse 15, it says, that triggered a response from one of the guests. How fortunate the one who gets to eat dinner in God's kingdom. Jesus followed that up saying, yes, for there was once a man who threw a great dinner party and invited many. When it was time for dinner, he sent out his servant to invite a guest saying, come on in. There's food on the table. They all began to beg off, one after another making excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of property. I need to go look it over. It's in my regrets. He must have bought it off Zillow online. <laughs> Another said, I just bought five teams of oxen. I really need to check them out. It's in my regrets. He must have gotten off CarMax or OxenMax or something. And yet another said, I just got married, and I need to go home to my wife. That's an e-harmony success story right there. <laughs> but the servant went back and told the master what had happened. And the master was outraged and told the servant, quickly, go out in the city streets and alleys. Collect all who look like they need a square meal. Lay your hands on them and bring them here. The servant reported back, master, I did what you commanded, and there's still room. There's still room at the table. The master said, Go into the country roads. Home, you, home you find. Drag them in. I want my house full. Let me tell you, not one of those who originally invited is going to get much as a bite at my dinner party. Wow. How many are thankful there's still room at the table? How many are thankful that there's space in God's kingdom for one more person? You see, God called us to the marginalized of Costa Rica. The indigenous are not loved by anybody. Where did God put us? Out in the highways and byways of the mountain trails. We're thankful for, for, for Speak of Life. If you've given us Speak of Life of your youth at us, thank you. You see, we have a 2002 Ford, not Ford, it's a Forerunner, it's a Toyota. If it was a Ford, it wouldn't be alive today. 
But we have a Toyota 4Runner that has gone up and down the mountains so many times that it almost could do it on autopilot. And I throw it in four wheel high, they go up four wheel low to come down. I have blown the valve gasket, I've blown three sets of tie rods, I put brakes on at least every year. And the cost is worth it. Let's have one more portion about Jesus. You see, that's what Speed Light's about. Carrying a missionary who carries the light of the gospel into the darkened areas. And so this morning in Sunday school, I told a story about one of the communities we work at, Aldo and Yon Arriba. You see in the, in the video, you might have seen a, a little old lady. Her name was Abuela Victoria. And she was weaving a handle to this machaca. This is a machaca. This is a man purse. I was said I'd never wear one. I'd never use a man purse here in the States. Now I'm wearing one. See, all the men on the reserve carry a machaca. And they'll put their cell phones in it. And while they're working, they hang the machaca on a tree. And they'll be out harvesting beans or rice or chicken to take care of the cattle. And they'll hear their phone ring. And they'll run all the way across the field to answer their phone. And put it right back in their machaca and go back to their daily work. And so I've got one now that Abuela made. The Abuela is between 80 and 90 years old. No one knows how old she is, and she won't tell you. <laughs> but I was working in a church in Las Vegas, and the pastor, my friend, dear friend, he's a brother. In fact, his wife says we're twins from different mothers because we have such the same heart. And so when I first met Rick Alter, he's like, Tim, I've been waiting seven years for someone to come to my community with discipleship materials. Help me start discipleship. So we did. And out of that, I met Abuela. Because one Sunday morning I was preaching, and she came up to me and said, I can't read. Can you help me? So I gave her an audio Bible, much like this one. And so she took it home after I explained how to use it. And she started playing it every day in her little, her little one-room home on the side of the mountain. And Catarino, the village chief, would walk by and he'd hear it play. And one day he walked by and he heard in his own language, in Guayme, John 3.16, that for God so loved the world, that he was only begotten the Son. And they heard John 3, 3, 6, 3, 17, sorry. And he sat there and, and he looked at Victoria and he looked at his bottle of whiskey. And he said, rewind that, rewind that. I want to hear that again. So three times he heard John 3, 16. Three times he heard John 3, 17. And he looked at Victoria and said, I want that. And he dropped his whiskey bottle, and he never picked it up again. Amen. And so the next time I saw a boy of Victoria at church, she said, Timoteo, ¿cuándo va? ¿Cuándo venís a mi iglesia? Timoteo, when you come to my church, I'm like, you don't have a church. He goes, no, you're going to plant one. And so Victoria lives in Alto Unión Arriba, and she was coming to Las Vegas. The hike down from Alto Unión Arriba to Las Vegas is about a three-hour hike. One way and three hour, and you gotta go all the way back uphill. Downhill is pretty easy. Going back up is another story. And so she said, When are you coming? When are you coming? So I looked at my friend Ricalter and I said, Pastor, where are we going? He said, Let's go now. So we went up and we started visiting homes and going door to door and just knocking on it and saying, Hey, how can we pray for you? What are your needs? Most of them have never heard about who Jesus really is. They had their own synchronistic and mystic beliefs, and it didn't involve Jesus or the one true God. And so we had to fight all through that. But what was great is this, is that we've gone door to door, we've met with people. We started with a proclaimer at a home with 13 people listening to the word of God, discussing the word, singing praise and worship songs. <coughs> In that, 13, that group of 13 people, within a matter of weeks, turned into 30 people. In a community of about 75 people and about 20 families, we planted a church. And you say, why would you plant a church? We up the mountainside. Well, there's only 20 families. You're the ones that I called us to. You see, Jesus said the shepherd would leave the 99 to go to the one. You're the ones that God called us to. And here's the great thing. 10, 15, 20 years down the road, there's going to be 35 families, 40 families, 50 families, 60 families. But better time now to reach them when they can be on the ground floor and people are hungry for Jesus. I wonder what's happening. And so one time we took a group of students 
uh, in Sunday school today, I was asked what Sincel is, and that's our language school in Costa Rica. For anybody who wants to be a missionary in Latin America, we come to Costa Rica and learn Spanish. So we took all of our language school students with us to the reserve. They got on two buses and came a six-hour ride with us down there. And we took them up to Alto Union Arriba. We had to go door to our door and invite people for lunch. We're going to fix lunch for people and share a story of who Jesus really is. And so we made a big olla, big pot of, of arroz con pollo, chicken and rice. And we had it all set and prepared. What I didn't know is that the alcalde, or the county commissioner, had already made promises and was going up to meet with everybody at the one-room schoolhouse. He sent somebody on horseback ahead of us. And so there was hardly anybody at home. And everybody walked five miles to the one-room schoolhouse visiting families that were home. We got up there, and there were 75 people waiting to hear the alcalde make promises he wouldn't keep because he was up for re-election. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But here he is making those promises, and I walk in with my friend Rick Alter, and I say in Spanish, Después de esta reunión, vamos a tener una almuerzo para todos ustedes. As after this meeting, we're going to have a lunch for every one of you. Please come. And so we fed them arroz con pollo, and we gave them rojos molidos, we gave them something to drink, we met their physical needs, and then we sang a song in English, a worship chorus that they had no idea what it meant because they couldn't understand English, just to get their attention. And then we said, no, I'll tell you about a story that's found in the Bible. We shared the story of the woman with the issue of blood, and after we shared it, we asked some simple questions. Why was the woman with the issue of blood healed? Who do you see yourself as in this story? Did you like the story? Did you not like it? Who do you want to tell the story to? And nobody would answer any questions. They were kind of quiet and reserved like you guys are this morning. They didn't want to say anything that would be wrong and embarrass, you about, embarrass themselves. So they were really quiet. And all of a sudden, this lady, this whiny lady in the back, stood up and raised your hands and yelled, I don't know anything about this Bible you're talking about. I want to know more about this Jesus. I don't want to know more about this Jesus. How many want to know more about Jesus? You see, it's about planting seeds, it's about watering those seeds, it's about reaping the harvest. Your calendar was lonely in ministry, had no hope of reaching any more than indigenous in this community. We started discipleship. And now, because of the audio Bibles, we have 45 small groups on that reserve. 45 groups. The idea is to take five groups and combine them together and plan a church. We have one right now up in Alto Nuevo Riva. Our goal on that reserve is to plant four more churches. Actually, no, take that back. Eight more churches. I can't even add and multiply, divide, and more done by Spanish brain working in. We are going to plant churches where there have been no witnesses before. We're going to reach the lost at all costs because Jesus said to go. You know, if we look at the story of the great dinner party, there's a couple of things we can look at and see. That many were given special invitations. The messenger went out to call them in for dinner. Come on in. Come on in. He's ringing the dinner bell. And they all made excuses. And when those refused, the master sent another invitation out. Go and call them in. So the poor, the marginalized, the maimed, the blind were all called in for dinner. And yet the house wasn't full. And he told the servant, go back out. I want my house full. So here's some great truths in this story. God permits us to reject his invitation. He allows any excuse. He never forces anybody to accept it. Many were given invitations. The messenger said, it's all ready. Come on. Come on. Kind of sad. To reject God's an insult. He made a costly preparation for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. 1 Peter 18, 19 talks about that it was not with perishable things like silver and gold, but it was with the precious blood of Christ, the lamb without spot or blemish. The master has esteemed every one of us to be his friend. He wants us at the table. And others are influenced by our 
acceptance of the invitation or the rejection of that invitation. Here's the thing. What are we doing? Because we are now all the servant. And Jesus is the master saying, go into all the world. He wants his tail to be full. For us, it's the Malaguayami and, and the indigenous. For you around here in Newark and the, the eastern side of Columbus, this is your Jerusalem and Judea. You know, there's a, there, I must admit, I get frustrated with social media. Do you guys get frustrated with social media? I have to put people on snooze for 30 days or more. In this last five or six months, I think I'll put at least half my friends list on snooze. Some of them because they'll put photos and memes out there that says, Gabriel's warming up the trumpet. The, tr the rapture's coming soon. And I believe Jesus can come any time. But I also know there are 6,000 unreached people groups on this earth who have yet to hear the gospel. Church, it's time we unpack our luggage. It's time we get back out in the highways and byways. Many of us are expecting Jesus to come right this minute. But I look at scripture, and it says, in Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 28, 19, go make disciples of all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Among the Guayami, if you're talking about who Jesus really is, they'll mention Nakomala. He's their synchronistic, animistic son of their God, who spies on you, much like Muhammad decides whether or not you go to heaven or hell in Islam by jumping on the scale. Nakomala will do the same. He watches you and judges you if you're worthy or not. So there's no redemption through Jesus from <laughs> God. Our goal was to preach Jesus. That he came as a baby, lived a sinless life, was crucified on the cross and died, was buried for three days, rose again, and is coming back soon. And the word of the Lord says this, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you're saved. Hope has a name, it's Jesus Christ our Lord. We must preach hope to this dying world. You see, on the reserve, I could tell you about another friend of mine. He was lost and hurting. He was rejected by his earthly father. He was raised by one of our friends, Jose. Actually, Don Julio, Jose. And a little indigenous boy, eight years old, moved into his home, except he was part of his family. He grew up. But my friend wanted to go back to the old ways and live with his people. And so he accepted their beliefs. And so my friend now has been married four times. Actually not married, because the person he's with now is not his wife. Does it sound familiar to you? He hasn't had a real encounter with who Jesus is yet. But when he does have that real encounter, I want to be there to see the light change in his heart. I want to see my friend come to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, and break the curse for his kids, because now he's, he's got, you know, this fourth mujer, fourth woman, and he's got nine kids, and he's passing that curse to the next generation, and only Jesus will break that curse. We're not called to change culture, we're called to change hearts, and as Jesus changes hearts, culture is changed. And one day, my friend will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I've had many, many meals with, with my friend, over rice and beans, beans and rice, and got you been through, and they're all the same. But Jesus loves my friend, just as he loves me and you. He loves him just the way he is, but doesn't want him to stay that way. That's why he came. And as we go back to Costa Rica, hopefully this year, as we raise our support, I ask you to pray for us. Pray for the Guayami. Because, you know, I can't wait to eat beans and rice around the table, the berries of the lamb with them. What's your favorite meal? Is it Italian? Is it ribs? Is it Tex-Mex? What will you be eating at the marriage supper of the lamb before we celebrate communion together? You see, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to eat alone. I want to take your guayami with me. I want to sit at a table full of guayami. Who are you going to sit at your table with? Don't sit alone, friends. Pastor, will you come?
Thank you, Tim. It comes down to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What are we doing with the gospel, and how are we helping to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ goes forth? As Tim mentioned, the, the whole world needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then that'll be it. And I've, I've done messages before. If I were the devil, what would I do? I would stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would stop missions. I would tell Christians. I would tell the body of Christ, no, this isn't what's important. You need to do other things. You need to take care of other things. But really, the bottom line is making sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ goes forward. And so this morning, not only do we want to encourage you in your regular giving to missions, but we want to encourage you in praying for our missionaries that we would lift them up in prayer, that we would bless them through the power of the Spirit of God working in them and through them and providing for their needs. And so this morning, we're going to do two things as we close. We're going to be having our tithe and offering where uh, anything that comes in that's not marked is going to be going as an addition to what the church is giving to our missionaries to thank them for coming. So as the Lord lays it on your heart, I want you to give of your tithe and offering and then above and we're also going to be praying for, for Tim and Nicole, for the ministry, for God to protect them, especially in this climate of COVID and everything else that's going on, that God would open up doors that no one can close, and he would close doors that no one could open. So this morning, why don't you stand with me? And uh, Tim and Nicole, why don't you come back up here? And what I'd like for everyone to do is reach a hand toward them. And we're going to pray a prayer of faith, believing that God is going to bless them and anoint them. He will supply their need. He will protect them. And he will be glorified through them and through their ministry. So will you join me this morning? Let's pray. Father, Lord, I pray for this couple. I thank you for the anointing that you've placed upon their life to accomplish. Lord, I thank you that when you call people, you equip them. And I thank you for that equipping. Now, Lord, I thank you for the greatest equipping part is the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, as you have been with them, I pray that you would continue to embrace them. I pray that you will continue to pour into them, that you will strengthen them, encourage them. Just give them a transfusion of the blood of Christ to strengthen their bodies, to lift them up. And Father, for the, all their needs, I thank you that you supply every need, not according to what we have, but according to your riches and glory. And so I pray that you would bless them. Father, help us to recognize what you desire to do with us and through us to be a blessing to this family. Lord, speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear what your, your spirit is saying. Give us hearts that will obey. Now, Father, I pray a blessing upon our offering. Use it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to make our offering proclamation together. So if you join me in proclaiming, I sow my finances into the kingdom of God. The gospel will be preached in all the world. Lives will be set free and the kingdom of Satan will be stopped. It will produce for God and for me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, I count it as done, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Make sure you put this in. Tonight we've got uh, Pastor Rick's small group at 5 o'clock. We've got youth group at 5 o'clock. So come on back out. Enjoy that. Uh, Tuesday night's men's meeting, we're, we, with the weather that's coming in and different things that are going on, we're going to take a week off. So no, Wednesday, or no Tuesday night men's meeting this week. But uh, otherwise, enjoy your wonderful week. Don't forget to stop by the table and get some uh, prayer cards so you can be praying for our missionaries. Lord bless you.